Hey guys, today we will have a look at a patch from one of my uh, patrons, Pomeroy Paul. Thank you for sending me this to me. And thank you also patrons for your support and for the idea for this video. And let's have a quick listen and see what's going on in this patch and then try to explore some possibilities of what we can add to it. So now it sounds like this. Oh yeah, really jazzy, really mellow. Very nice. The main idea behind this patch is combining two LFOs and using the result as pitch information. So in this patch, the LFOs are sort of combined through the rectifier module from count modular. And um, if you look at the original LFO on the scope, and um, this one here, we can see that it's a sine wave LFO with a certain range. And the rectified version will be somewhat the same. Let's take this, the modulation out. So this is now the um, pink trace. But when we modulate the axis, we get a changing waveform. So it will look like this. Now this is going through a VCA here just to control its uh, range a bit, it will look like this after the VCA. Very nice. Now from there, the signal is going through um, two quantizers, two quantums for the famous um, quantum trick. And then it goes through two sample and uh, hold units. This one is from Bog Audio that are being triggered differently to get different uh, rhythms. So let's listen to the first voice, which is, um, let's say, the sort of bass, this one. Very nice. So the sample and hold is being triggered by the main clock. And the voice itself is coming from an FM operator all the way here. You see bass. Very nice. Now here, there are two things I've noticed. And before we look at them, actually, I just want to say that I will not use the terms correct or incorrect or a mistake because there are no really mistakes in modular and anyway in music. Um, there are only different approaches or different ways. And here, for example, you can see that the oscillator is going through a VCA and an ADSR module is controlling this VCA, but the FM operator has a built-in VCA and envelope generator that we can use. Now, the envelope on the uh, oscillator has no CV input for the release time, um, which is being modulated in, in this case, um, but the modulation has no really effect here because the release time is really long and the modulation source is pretty weak. So if you look at it on another scope, this is the modulation source, if I uh, click and hold control, I can just take another um, cable from the source. So I don't have to look for the source. I can just take it from the where it's going to. So this is the modulation source. And you can see that uh, uh, it's uh, also going above zero, which will again have no effect because the release time is already um, at maximum. So the only effect will be from the negative voltage, which is again, not so strong. So what we can do, First of all, let's use a different modulation source. For example, we can use the pitch information. So again, I will disconnect the CV from here and all I have to do is um, click control and hold it and then take another source, the same source for pitch information to the release time. Very nice. And the, this way the higher notes will have more sustain, but let's also shorten the release time so it will have also an effect. So now the modulation will start from here and we'll um, lengthen the release time so the higher notes um, will send more voltage or higher notes means uh, more voltage, more voltage means more modulation, longer release time.
Very nice. Now another thing um, that we can see here is that the envelope is active for the feedback amount on the oscillator, but the oscillator is not receiving any gates, so the envelope is not triggered and there is no change in feedback amount. So let's take the feedback amount all the way down and use the same gate we use for the envelope. Again, click and hold control and I can take the gate to the oscillator. And now the feedback knob becomes an attenuator so we can increase the modulation amount. This will make the sound a bit uh, brighter. And if we are already sending gates to the oscillator, let's also use its built-in VCA and envelope. So let's activate the level envelope. And instead of going to the VCA first, we will go directly to the mixer. Very nice. Now we can change the envelope to be somewhat the same. Something like this. Very nice. And the sustain level will have the effect um, like the release time had on the ADSR. So more sustain level, the longer um, the release time will be. So let's modulate the sustain level with the same signal we are using here for the release time. Now we can also amplify this signal a bit to get better results. So let's use the amplifier from Bog Audio and send the signal first to the amplifier. So this is our original signal, it looks like this. And this will be after the amplifier and we can just amplify this maybe all the way up. So we have more range. And this will go now to modulate the sustain level. And again, the sustain knob now becomes an attenuator to set the maximum amount. And again, higher notes will have longer um, sustain or higher sustain level. Okay, so we can remove now the VCA and ADSR, we don't need them in this case. So we can save some space and also the CPU. Now let's have a look at the second voice. Let's mute um, everything else. Okay, so this is the second voice, this melody. Again, this is really nice and jazzy. The quantize signal goes to another sample and hold. Um, but this time it's being triggered by the trigger sequencer here from Autodafe. And uh, the clock for this sequencer, it's receiving an external clock. This clock is a multiplied clock, but it's this one multiplied by two, but it's also with added swing to it. So it's uh, nice and jazzy. Now also here you can see that we can use the internal VCA and envelope generator of the FM operator. But actually before we do this, you can see that again the envelope for the feedback amount is active, but there is no incoming gate, so it has no effect. And also the envelope um, for the FM depth is active, but there is nothing connected to the FM input. So also here there will be no effect. So let's start by using the internal envelope um, of the oscillator, we will use the gate that we are using for the ADSR, which is coming again from the trigger sequencer. Let's activate the level envelope. Now we can skip the VCA, no need for the VCA. Let's set the same envelope more or less. Something like this it was. Very nice. Now again, we can remove the VCA and uh, ADSR modules, save space and CPU. Now about the depth control, again, since there is nothing connected to the FM input, there will be no change. So we can turn this off actually. And we can raise now the feedback amount a bit. Just a bit to make it brighter maybe. Very nice. Now from there, the signal goes um, through a signal delay module from Sonus. This one here, which will take a signal 
and create two versions of it um, delayed from one another. So let's look at it also on the scope. I have here two scopes. Let's use one of them. Maybe the other one we can delete. Just like this. Very nice. Okay, so let's look at this on the scope. One and two. So you can see that the um, signals are delayed from one another. But after that, after the signal delay module, the signal goes through a chorus from Nischi. That if we look on it on the scope or edit on the scope, we can see that the signal is somewhat back, being only slightly delayed because that's what a chorus will do. So the signal delay module from Sonus is not really effective in this case. Again, it's not wrong or a mistake, but we can save some space and CPU and by removing it and get more or less the same results. So let's send the signal directly to the chorus and remove the signal delay module. And we have the same results, but we saved some space and CPU. Now from there the signal goes through a tremolo effect also from Nischi that adds more motion to the overall sound. So if we bypass this, you can hear that the sound is more static, but with it, it's much more alive and moving. So let's listen again to everything together. Very cool. Now you can notice here that we have the 12 key from Impromptu connected to the transpose input of the second quantizer, but it will have um, not a, a, um, an effect. It will transpose for a short time and will go back to default. So let me show you this again on the scope. I will connect the CV out also to the scope. Now let's say I want to transpose by seven semitones. Look at the scope, what's uh, going on. It's going up and down again. Look at it again. Going up and down. Never mind where I transpose to. It will transpose just for a second and then go back to zero. Now this happens because the clock is connected to its gate input. You can see the clock is connected to the gate input of the 12 key. Now the gate input is intended for chaining a few 12 key modules together. So as long as it's connected, uh, the 12 key will go back to zero with each clock. But if we disconnect it, and now we transpose, you can see also on the scope that the transposition will stay until the next uh, change we make. You can see it here, and you can hear it also that it's uh, transposed. And again, this will transpose the whole scale because it's, trans it's uh, transposing the second quantum. Okay, now another thing, um, we have some send effects here. We have a delay, Corona Blob 2 and the reverb plateau. And if you notice, the reverb is set uh, like this, that the dry signal also goes through. And again, this is not a mistake. Maybe that's the sound you're looking for, but let's try setting the reverb to output only the wet signal. Again, we are dealing with send effects, so we don't get the dry signal twice. Just add the dry signal out. Let's also change the settings of the reverb a bit, just to add some more uh, motion or interest to the sound, add some mod uh, modulation. Maybe take the low frequencies a bit down. Maybe also less decay and a bit pre-delay. Just a bit. Very nice. Now the last section here is the drum section, the drums. We have a snare and a ride, both from Autodafe. We have also some delay on them. Let's listen to this just a second. We have some uh, delay send effect as a send effect. Now this delay, uh, with this delay, we get this ghost notes feel. And they also receive triggers from the trigger sequencer. 
And again, it, uh, the trigger sequencer is receiving a clock with some added swing to it, which is really nice. So let's listen to everything together again. Such a nice, uh, a nice patch. And let's try to develop this patch a bit. Um, Paul wrote me that his goal, or where we wanted this patch to go, is to have the pitch information actually as a bipolar signal and have a sort of an offset to it in musical intervals so the melody will go up and down from this offset. So let's see how we can do this. First of all, let's uh, exchange the VCA um, that attenuates the pitch information with a dual attenuverter from Befaco. This one here, so let's send the pitch information through the dual attenuverter first. Now we can get rid of the VCA. Very nice. Now let's have a look also on the scope. I have here another scope somewhere. Yeah, this one here. Okay, so this is how it will be now. Of course, it's not open, so we get nothing, but we can open the attenuverter just a bit. So jazzy, so nice. Now what more we can do with this uh, attenuverter is push the signal down, we can offset it down so we have a bipolar signal with the offset knob. You can see now it's more or less unipolar, just starts at zero and goes up. But we can push this down to get a bipolar, maybe open the attenuverter a bit more. Just find the sweet spot. Oh yeah. Oh yes. And now the pitch will go up and down from the fundamental pitch of the oscillator. And what we can do now is mix this signal with another 12 key with using U-Mix from Borg Audio, for example, which looks like this. U-Mix is a Unity mixer. Um, it will add voltages together. And in the right-click menu, we can um, choose also CV mode. Um, so we can use this with control voltage, for example, pitch information. So let's add another 12 key. We'll just duplicate the one, one uh, we have here. Let's send the CV output to U-Mix. And also use the signal from the dual attenuverter. Send it first to U-Mix. And from there, we will go to the quantizer. Very nice. Now we can offset the melody in spaces of musical intervals. So for example, we can jump seven semitones up. Or we can also jump an octave up. And even go even higher. Go back. And this is something we cannot do with the transpose input of quantum because quantum will not transpose the pitch, but only the scale. But with this 12 key, we can transpose the pitch and the melody will sort of dance around this note, going up, going down, because again, now we have a bipolar signal. Very cool. Okay, let's add another voice. Um, let's see, let's add a sort of a, a fade as a voice that uh, is fade, fades in. So let's use the wave oscillator from Blemsoft. This will be the voice. Um, we will sample the pitch again. So we will need another sample and hold. Let's just duplicate this one here. Where did it go? Very nice. Let's use again the quantized signal after the quantizer, of course. Um, but we will use a slower clock. So let's uh, set the second clock that we are not using anymore. This clock went to the 12 key, but we don't need it. So let's set it to be divided by 16. So really slow and also reset the swing. We don't need swing in this case. And let's use this to trigger the sample and hold. And then use this as pitch information. Let's put it here. 
this will be the pitch information and let's have a listen to how this sounds like set it also on the mixer so bend this left and right maybe add some reverb and also set the levels okay now what I want is that this voice will fade in so let's use a VCA I will use the one from AS which will look like this so it's a we have two VCAs in one let's send the voice first to the VCA and just then to the mixer very nice and we will use a slow limiter to smoothen out the clock signal the slow clock and create a longer rise or attack time and um, for this voice so we will use the slow limiter from Bog audio let's use the same divided clock so again I click and hold control and I can just take another source of the, from the gate here very nice let's send it to modulate or control the VCA set a longer rise time or attack time something like this short the fall time oh yeah Very nice, let's raise the density so we have a few more voices, a few more oscillators, lower the detune, raise the spread so it's nice and uh, stereo. Let's change the wavetable also to Viking. Oh yeah. And let's use the slew limiter also to modulate or to control the position of the wavetable. Oh yes, let's listen to this. Oh yeah, one more time, because it's fun. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so now let's add a nice solo to this. We will use Basil from Vult. Maybe just take the levels a bit down. I can do this from here. Okay, we'll use Basil from Vult and we will also use Wok, again Bog Audio and this will generate the pitch information and I will want to send it through the same set of quantizers I don't want to add more quantums so let's go to this section here, to the quantizer section let's add Merge we will use Polyphony and let's add also Split very nice um, now let's send the pitch information coming from the first umix to the first channel of merge and then to quantum and then what we are sending from quantum out will come out of the first channel and then quantum will go to the poly input and now we have up to 16 channels we can use with this set of quantums so we don't need to add more quantums again save CPU save space and what we will do first, we will mix again the pitch information coming out of walk. We're using Umix again, set it to CV mode so we can work uh, work with uh, pitch information. I will use the same signal that we are mixing with the first um, um, Umix from the 12 key. Send it again to Umix. And again, I will mix this with walk. So if we offset the pitch, everything will move together. The whole patch will uh, be offset uh, together. Now let's take this, the output to the quantizer section. I will use the second channel. Again, we have up to 16 channels now. And out of the second channel, I will take this to basil. Very nice. And let's look at scope, at scope, at walk on the scope. <laughs> let's do something like this, just so we can set a nice um, range. 
so let's scale this down a bit let's take the rate up just for now just so i can see the range here take the scale down maybe offset it also a bit upwards here i can see this the range and this again will be pitch information so if we have three volt we have three octaves which is maybe a bit too much i don't want so many octaves so take the scale a bit more down now we can take the rate a bit down very nice and let's listen to this this will go to the mixer we have another channel here let's solo this add some reverb and take the level up okay maybe take it also one octave up oh yeah very cool let's listen to everything together Oh yeah. Very cool. Now I want that this melody um, will play only when the wave oscillator finishes its cycle. So let's add the logic module from Bog Audio. It's called Bull, it's this one here. This is Sams, it's not this one. I will just look for Bull, this one here, very nice. Okay, and let's send Basil to a VCA. I will use again the VCA from PCV and then to the mixer. Very nice. We will use another slew limiter. Let's just duplicate this one. And in this case, take the uh, rise time also down. And we will use the same divided clock and send it to the not input first of the logic module. So again, I click and hold control so I can take just another source, another clock. And this will go first to the not input. Let me show you this also on the scope. So this will be the clock. And now from out of the not output, as long as the clock is low, we will have a clock out of the not output. So this is a sort of the opposite clock, let's say. You can see this here. The main clock is active. And now the not output is active. And we can use this to modulate the VCA. So now, just when wave, the wave oscillator is finished with its cycle, then we have the solo. And you can notice that the clock signal after the logic module is hitting only, it's this one, it's hitting only positive 5 volts. So the VCA, you can see this also here, it's not uh, open fully. You see, it's just at the half. But what we can do is use another amplifier like the one we've used before. So let's look for it, it's here, just duplicate it. And now what we can do, send the signal first to the amplifier and now amplify the signal somewhere about 10 volts. And use this to modulate the VCA. And now it's open fully. Let's use the pitch information to modulate also the oscillator. So again, click and hold control so I can take two more sources, open the attenuators all the way. So again, the higher notes will be brighter in this case. Oh yeah. Maybe take the levels a bit down. Now let's change actually the voice of the wave oscillator. I don't like it so much, this uh, fade in, faded in voice. We can have it um, to have like a conversation with Basil. So they will use the same um, pitch information. So let's disconnect this here and use the same pitch uh, information from Basil. 
let's change the slew limiter also to have a shorter rise time and use the pitch information also to modulate the position of the wave table so again higher notes will be brighter oh yeah So they have a sort of conversation, one time the wave oscillator is playing, the other time basil is playing and all of this on top of this jazzy melody and drums Okay, and this patch can go in many different directions from here, um, but that was it for today. Thank you again, Paul, for the patch, and thank you, Patreons, for your support and for the idea for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, consider becoming also a Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell, and have a good one.